wake of Bloody Sunday and enacted the 65 Voting Rights Act, uh, that put an end to de jure uh, discrimination. Uh, but the political descendants of those who, who fought against the Voting Rights Act uh, are still active today. And what we've done in Maryland, I would say, has to some degree has been in response to the latest dirty trick. Uh, and I, I, would, I should add, as a sitting next to uh, or near Jamie, who is a First Amendment uh, constitutional scholar and professor, that you do have to be uh, do these things consistent with the First Amendment uh, when you're trying to deal with uh, with dirty tricks, with literature that is distributed. Two most significant examples in Maryland, uh, the literature that said vote on November 6th, the primary was November, or the general rather, was November 4th, uh, and make sure you've paid your parking tickets, uh, your rent, uh, any outstanding warrants, none of which is a disqualifying factor. So. That happened in, the, in our gubernatorial election in 04, uh, and so, excuse me, in 02. So I started working on the Voting Rights Protection Act, reading about what had gone on in Ohio in 04, Real, literally the morning after when I was reading about some of the games that had been played in terms of what actually, I think that morning of, the Sixth Circuit held that there was, a, there was an issue with regard to uh, uh, where there were going to be challengers. And, the Sixth Circuit let it, did not intervene. Is that right? Yeah. So that's what prompted me to get started. Uh, more recently, we've had the dirty trick uh, was uh, campaign literature that was mailed in Prince George's County, perhaps some in Montgomery County and uh, lower income neighborhoods, implying that the Republican candidate for governor uh, was endorsed by uh, former Congressman in Fume, County Executive Jack Johnson an appeal to African-American voters. Um, and I think Senator Obama has introduced legislation to address that problem at the federal level. I have as well at the, at the state level. Uh, and that has not yet passed because we, we passed the Voting Rights Protection Act in 05 and 06. Last year the bill passed the House but not the Senate, so we hope to, to pass it this year. What have been our sources to address these problems? Well. HAVA, Help America Vote Act, on the issue of voter ID, uh, whereas there's been an effort uh, and there have been some prosecutions, as we now know, as part of the Gonzalez scandal, uh, to claim fraud uh, and, and assert fraud. You almost in Maryland have these images, that, you know, they would say with early voting, well, you'd say, literally people who should know better uh, were saying, well, someone can vote in Garrett County in Western Maryland early in the week and work their way to the Eastern Shore by the end of the week voting five times. Clearly almost the image of a carpetbagger uh, working his or her way through, through the state. Um, so what we enacted in terms of voter ID is if you are challenged, uh, you can show as ID those documents which, which are acceptable under the federal HAVA uh, for the first time you're voting if you voted or, or if you registered by mail. So this is a state-issued document or the bill for your rent or gas and electric that has your address. So we've copied federal law in that area. And in the bill that we hope to pass this year, uh, we're copying the, the federal law in the area. That's the Voting Rights Act because that allows for you to go into court uh, if you have, I think, and the judge to order an injunction if you have reasonable grounds to believe that a provision of state law with regard to elections uh, is going to be violated. Otherwise, you know, you go into, if you have to wait until the violation occurs on election day, the horse is really out of the barn door. Uh, so I would say that's a, a glimpse, quick summary of the kinds of things uh, that, where I've been involved in and where for the most part uh, we have put those laws on the books. And I know there is a handout that lists, gives you links to all those laws. And it has struck me that, you know, why aren't liberals, Democrats taking the initiative at the state level to pass legislation uh, to ensure access at the ballot, to respond to the kind of things that are being done still today, uh, 40 plus years after the Voting Rights Act, to limit access to the ballot. Thank you.
Thank you, Representative. Uh, and certainly uh, good questions for us to think about in terms of uh, why.